Welcome back to uh, this lesson about solving nonlinear equations using open methods. In the previous video, we introduced the secant method and the algorithm that uh, it, it works with. Also, we noticed uh, one of its advantages is that it only needs a single evaluation of the function at each iteration uh, besides uh, the uh, initial two guesses. Uh, and also, it doesn't need uh, the slope. It doesn't need uh, evaluation of the slope of the function uh, to uh, go on with the solution. Uh, in this uh, video, we are going to present an example using the same function we used all over the uh, numerical, uh, uh, the, sorry, the methods for solving nonlinear equations. Uh, f of x is e to the minus x minus 0 0.5. Uh, now we start with two initial guesses, x0 equals minus 1 and x1 equals uh, 0. Uh, for those two x's, to those two values of x, we need to evaluate the functions. So now we have two points, uh, f of minus, uh, uh, minus 1 and f of minus 1, 0 and f of 0. Now we can create an equation of the line and use that to get our uh, next guess. Uh, so here we use it directly into the relation x2 will be equal to x1 time uh, minus uh, this which is actually if you notice uh, f of x1 minus f of x0 over x1 minus x minus x0 is the slope of uh, the line uh, which is an approximation uh, to what newton raphson method needed which is the slope of the function. Here we use an approximate evaluation of uh, the slope. Uh, then the following step is getting f of x2. Now I only need a single evaluation and use this single evaluation together with the information I already have to uh, evaluate x3. Uh, and following that, a uh, few more steps, uh, I get the solution 0.69315, uh, uh, which uh, if you notice here needed is uh, one more iteration than the new to Raphson, which is still not bad at all uh, if you need only uh, six or seven iterations to find the solution of this function compared to almost 14 uh, in the open, uh, sorry, in the bracketing methods. Always you will find the open methods faster than the bracketing method, but let me always remind you this um, speed comes with a price that is you might not be able to find a solution uh, for many reasons, one of which if you start with a very bad initial guess, you'll actually uh, get lost uh, right away. So uh, now let's see how the program for the secant method uh, may work. Uh, let's get back to uh, the octave uh, and see uh, the secant method. Uh, here you are. Let's clear the console. Uh, sorry. Uh, now, uh, the program, which is already uploaded on GitHub, you can download it from there, starts again with two initial guesses uh, and ev an evaluation of one of them. Uh, so here we evaluate F1, uh, which we are going to use uh, uh, later. But inside the loop, you only evaluate is the function uh, only once. Again, uh, here the tolerance and the maximum number of iteration. We initialize the counter and the error and start the search loop. Inside the loop, you increment the counter. Uh, you don't have the derivative here. Uh, uh, then uh, we uh, get to uh, getting x3 using x1, x2, f of x1, and f of x2. Uh, now we see the error. If x3 is not 0, again, we always put this condition just in case you are very unlucky and you got x3 exactly equal to 0. Uh, if not, then we get the absolute, uh, uh, sorry, the relative error. Uh, if it is 0, we just see how much did we uh, move uh, along the solution. Uh, now, uh, if uh, we are, uh, after evaluating this error, we do the shift, we put f1 equals f2, then x1 equals x2, and then we put uh, x2 equals the new uh, evaluation x3 to go back into the loop to evaluate f of x2. Uh, 
Uh, now we check if we uh, uh, really did arrive to the solution f1 is zero or not which is quite rare to happen if not let's check for the tolerance uh, if we haven't uh, the error is still not less than the tolerance then we check whether we are uh, we exceeded the maximum number of iterations or not in any of these cases just break uh, and get out of the loop if not go back and evaluate f of x2 and so on here uh, let's run the problem here you are, you get uh, the Fs, F1 and F2, and following that you get X3, F2, X3, F2, just one evaluation of the function each time. And you can see here that actually this might have been uh, a good solution if uh, you want something, uh, um, I mean, uh, not much uh, change uh, in decimal places. However, uh, you can see that uh, by the sixth iteration, we uh, got the number that was confirmed on the seventh iteration, and now we only had seven uh, times uh, we went through the loop. Uh, this concludes the second uh, uh, the second method. Uh, the, we saw now the example uh, using uh, the second method and the program that solved the example. Uh, this uh, brings us to the modified Newton-Raphson method which is uh, the neutral option, but we try to avoid the evaluation of the slope. You will see that we always talk about the evaluation of the slope as one of the problems. In practical problems, the evaluation of the, uh, the slope is uh, not readily available in most of the uh, practical problems. That's why we try to modify our search methods to avoid uh, the evaluation of the slope. And we'll come back to that later in the course when we talk about optimization. You'll see that we will uh, try to avoid the evaluation of the uh, slopes uh, because they present a second derivative in that case. Anyway, for now, uh, let's uh, see next video how the modified Newton-Raphson method works. Uh, so, see you next video.